Welcome to my humble abode. My name is Kayla Williamson, and this is Journalism Done Right. Okay. <laughs> this is episode one of the Pulse's first crash course on how to write for journalism, and my new skill for the summer. In today's episode, Dumbledore's odd obsession with weird candy, and the difference between writing an English essay and writing a journalism article. And yes, there is a difference, you heathens! I want you to take everything you've learned about English and forget it. Well, not the grammar part. The world needs more grammar Nazis, don't you think? Yes. Okay then. But anyway, to all those English majors out there, you are not writing poetry. Journalism does not require prolonged passages full of perspicacious verbiage. You are not trying to persuade anyone to any one side, or seeing how many times you can repeat the same idea. There are only so many ways you can say, I believe I'm right. Journalism at its essence is telling people stories. It's finding the truth in the situation and translating it so that an 8th grader can read it. Yes, it's straightforward and concise, but that doesn't mean that as a journalist you can't be creative or clever. So to break it down, here's the top four differences between journalism writing and English writing. Number one! Journalism is time sensitive. English essays are timeless. You'll never be old hat, that's that. You're timeless to me. Basically, you can read an English essay tomorrow, or five years from now, or a hundred years from now, and it still could be relevant. Journalism is only relevant for so long. Eventually, Taylor Swift will find another boyfriend. Or Congress will pass a law that makes it legal to steal candy from babies. Number two. Journalism is objective. English writing is persuasive, opinionated, editorialized. So, you say Dumbledore dislikes Bertie Bot's beans. In English writing, you're trying to prove that Bertie Bot's beans is the worst candy out of all of them. If Dumbledore doesn't like it, then why should you? In journalism, you gotta prove it. You quote it. Ah. Bertie Botts, every flavor beans. I was most unfortunate in my youth to come across a vomit-flavored one. And since then, I'm afraid I've lost my liking for them. But then you have to quote Harry, Ron, Hermione, Draco, and Voldemort's least favorite kind of candy. Because you can't be biased towards the good old white gay wizard. You have to have all the perspectives, including you-know-who. Number three. Speaking of quoting things, both journalism and English writing rely on people, books, websites, and articles to prove our point. But in journalism, we present both sides and let the audience come to their own conclusions. So you see a trend, like watching live TV isn't cool anymore. So you give a story of someone who doesn't have time to watch live TV, or only binge watches Netflix on the weekends. You don't explain that this proves streaming is a new cable. You let your readers decide for themselves how to interpret the information. You are just presenting the facts. Like I mentioned before, journalism is storytelling. Nonfiction, real people. English essays use facts and stories to prove a point. So what about creative writing? In journalism, you either see it with your own eyes to describe it, or you quote someone else saying it. And even then, you can't always trust your sources. Take salsa for example. Natalie, my camera person here, thinks that her mom's salsa isn't that spicy. But I have tried it once and have drank three water, bo water bottles because of it. It's totally not spicy. It is spicy! It's delicious. Yeah. In summary, journalism is a different form of writing. It's a responsibility. You're in charge of telling other people's stories when they can't, so don't screw it up. So, if you're watching this as a new member of the Pulse staff, if you want to hone your skills, I encourage you to read other articles. See if you can pick out the difference between English and journalism writing or what rules they break. I'll put a link to some of my favorite articles below, or find a few on your own. Till next time.